Hello, my name is Professor John Benjamin, and this is West Virginia Wesleyan College, and this is Web Design. Today we'll be talking about the web, the environment, and the tools. All right, let's begin. All right, so one of the first things that I want to talk about is to distinguish between uh, the network, a network, the World Wide Web, and the Internet. So uh, to do so, we'll define a computer network as consisting of connected computers, mobile devices, printers, data storage, um, all of this all connected into one single network. Um, the internet is a worldwide uh, public network that connects millions of these private networks. So when we're talking about the internet, we're talking about a lot of things, a lot of interconnected networks that are private and not available to everyone. And there's a lot of different devices and data, not just web pages. And so that's what's important to distinguish uh, between that and the World Wide Web. Typically, we, we may use the Internet and the World Wide Web interchangeably, but the Internet and the Web are not the same. Um, the Internet is a worldwide public network of links of providing networks that give people and users access to a variety of resources of communication. The Web is a subset of the Internet. Um, it's a part of the Internet that consists of connected computers called web servers that hold web pages. And a website is just a collection of web pages. So that's really important to, to, just to distinguish that. We're really typically, and then in this class, we're talking about the web. We're not really talking about the internet. <clears throat> so in a website, as we all know, the primary page is the home page. And this is important to know because the home page is the page, the file that has index.html as its name. And that connects to the URL or the web address. And all the other subpages will come after that or connect to that with a slash through a folder. But this is the first page and this is the index. And so each web address can only have one index. So we browse and surf the web. Really, we're just exploring different web pages, just hopping from one page to the next and that are hyperlinked uh, together. So if we're going to be web designers, we have to think a little bit more critically about what we're actually doing and how the things that we create influence the greater society. And there is good and bad, and we just want to be a little bit more aware of it, think about it more critically. Um, so one of the negatives, you might say, is that now, especially with our phones, we're, more, we're constantly connected, and there, there is a price. So in the, in the past... The workday ended at 5 o'clock, and you could kind of leave that behind. Well, now the workday kind of really is extended, depending on the limitations that you put on yourself. Um, we can be contacted. We're constantly checking our phones on through into the weekend. And it's a lot of pressure because to do good business, you want to be on top of things because things are happening so, so quickly. Uh, other things to consider is that just that constant need to, to check in, and, um, and it's difficult to unplug, if you will. All right, but let's talk about communication. Now, one of the first things that we need to establish when we're talking about the web and when we're thinking about being web designers is how this visual interface communicates. And the three things that it needs to communicate uh, is trustworthiness, timeliness, and value. Otherwise, we're, um, we're just going to we'll, we'll leave. And so this is really critical. And really two major ways uh, that this happens. First is trustworthiness. And this is typically purely visual. So is the, are the photographs high quality? And are they appropriate? Or do they, are they just stock photos? Um, is there a simple color scheme that all connects the, to a brand? Is it open? Is the text chunked or grouped properly? So these are all things that we can capture in a glance that gives us a sense of trustworthiness. If it's a mess and it's garish, it's untrustworthy. Then there's timeliness, and that has to do with the content itself. So as soon as we start reading, is this current and accurate um, information? Is it up to date? Uh, and we'll know right away when we start reading. It's funny, most of us just, just intuit this. We don't even really think about it. And then lastly, there is value. So value comes into play when are we, is there repeat traffic? Is this a value to me? I keep checking back in. It has valuable information uh, that I'm, I, I want to access. So those are the really incredible, important things. So the next thing we want to just consider is how we all communicate now. And again, we sort of take this uh, for granted. Um, there's just so many ways that we can interact with uh, our other humans other than just the telephone uh, or face-to-face. -face. So web chats, those are typically online help. Uh, nowadays, we can 
Well, the phone number is pushed way down on the list because that's not very effective. Um, so we have question and answer on the website, and then next level is web chat or email, and then the next level is, is a telephone. Uh, voice chat, this is things like Discord, you know, where when we're gaming, we can, we can voice chat and interact that way. Uh, instant messaging, um, group messaging apps such as Slack, uh, where we can all group uh, text and message and send information just as a, as a single group that you've been invited to. Collaborative workspace environments like GoToMeeting and Zoom. Uh, blogs, which are like Facebook and Twitter, but again, more in-depth and more personal, typically. Video sharing, YouTube, Bitsy, uh, social networking, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google. Uh, social bookmarking websites, such as Pinterest. And then lastly, uh, wikis. And wikis are um, websites that allow collaborative editing on documents. And uh, a little bit of trivia, wiki means um, quick in Hawaiian. All right, the next thing we want to talk about is how the uh, World Wide Web is affecting education and or in the, the internet in certain cases. And so nowadays, you can take an online course from an academic institution. You can earn a degree or a certificate. So this is something that's happening more and more. And now with the uh, COVID-19 uh, worldwide epidemic, um, it's even even more so. So even, even in high school and things along those lines. Um, you can watch a video or read a blog post by an amateur or an expert. I mean, how many of you do DIY? I repair my car, I, I do home improvement, all of these things via YouTube, which was never um, an option before. So a lot of DIY going on, um, still a great need for you know plumbers and electricians, but a lot of it we can do ourselves. Uh, and then uh, several universities and academic institutions publish educational materials online like we're doing right here, right now using management systems such as Blackboard and Canvas. Now let's take a look at our entertainment and our news. So this has dramatically changed in society, uh, particularly um, during the, uh, the worldwide recession of 2008 and 2012 uh, in that area. At the same time, the um, iPhone had come out and uh, the iPad. And so suddenly we're trying to access our news uh, on a digital device, so we're finding it for free. And so what are the downsides of this, of course, Asian sources that we're getting our news from aren't quite as trustworthy as things once were. The uh, larger newspapers like um, the New York Times and the Washington Post, the Post, which is entirely online now, are still really trust trustworthy, but it's been a giant transformation uh, how we, um, we get our news. And then now we don't just read our news or watch the news on the nightly TV. We can access it at any time. And if I go to a news website, um, there's a lot of interactive information design elements that I can uh, you know, learn, learn a lot more, a lot more quickly. Um, in, in addition to choosing, do I want to read the news or listen to the news? E-commerce has been dramatically changed um, if we just think about Amazon pandemic. So uh, for instance, when lockdown first started, uh, everybody was ordering on Amazon and Amazon just shot through the roof. It was already a really main source for a lot of people um, to to buy their products. Um, so now I'm really struggling though. I've used Amazon a little bit too much and I'm trying to make a real effort to buy local. Um, so we want to consider this, these terms too. Is it, uh, we're talking about B2C. That's the one we're most familiar with, business to customer. But we also need to be familiar with the whole business to business side of things like restaurant supply. And then lastly, there's customer to customer. I buy lots of things uh, using Facebook Marketplace. So there's different types of connections. Uh, we're most familiar with uh, broadband, uh, DSL, which is not quite as common. Around here we use Sunlink, that's uh, CATV lines. And then a few places like Google and um, Comcast use uh, FTTP or fiber to premises, which is even faster. There are satellite services if you are out in a rural area, although um, they're a little unreliable. And, uh, mobile wireless technologies, we're familiar with Bluetooth, a little uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Uh, the, the creator was a history buff and uh, Harold Bluetooth uh, Gormanson was the king of Denmark and he, herald, he introduced Christianity uh, to, to Denmark came from. Uh, we all know Wi-Fi, uh, wireless fidelity and the cellular telephones, 3G, 4G, gaming and streaming media and we're working on 5G nowadays because our demand for um, faster services is growing. Um, a web browser is a program or app that requires downloads and displays web pages to, on a web server. So it's important to remember that a web browser is just, uh, it reads HTML5, hypertext markup language, the fifth 
edition of it, and that's what the browser does. It translates those tagged, that tagged data into a, into a visual um, presentation. So we know Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, and the like. So, but a really important concept that we're going to really focus on in this class is RWD, responsive web design. So it's used to create websites that adjust to the screen size, simple example of it. So here's a website on a desktop, and then uh, using RWD principles, it just simply collapses, so then we can uh, better read it on our phone. Uh, not that long ago, before Ethan Marcotte developed this, um, it was very difficult. There was a challenge, where there was a whole really awkward period where websites didn't collapse. They were of one size, and they fit to lar the largest uh, screen size or desktop. And then for a while, what web developers were doing was creating a mobile website and then a, a desktop website, which was very expensive. And then it was very problematic because the mobile site didn't do all the things that the main website did. But now, thanks to uh, Ethan Marcotte's uh, development of RWD, um, we have the two websites are the same. So we can access it on our phone, all the same uh, interactivity and all the same things are available on our phone. Um, and it, it all works together just splendidly. All right, so some important aspects uh, of a web browser, and we t take a look at the URL. So you access a web page by typing in the URL, which is the Uniform Resource Locator. And it consists uh, of a domain name, as we can see here. That's the one we're most familiar with, the protocol. That is uh, what calls it up. And then here, this is important too, this is referred to as the top. Um, the protocol is... Um, specifies the format for transferring uh, the data. More familiar today is HTTPS, so that's Hypertext uh, Transfer Protocol S for um, secure. And then of course folders are really important. Whenever you see the slash, that means there's another file in a folder. The first part here, that's the folder's name. And then after that, there's gonna be the file names that are in that folder. Okay, so yet yeah, uniform resource locator, the URL, and like I mentioned, it's composed of the protocol, the domain, and the top level domain, and then of course the folder. Um, email, like POP or IMAP, um, is, for, is an email uh, um, protocol, and then FTP is file transfer protocol, and we'll use that in Dreamweaver, and that's how we move or migrate our files from our computers um, to the web server. Here are some other top-level domains. Uh, there can be divided up by country, um, .gov, .edu, uh, .com, standing for commercial, uh, .ml for military. All right, so let's talk about types of websites. So there's personal, organizational, slash topical, and then commercial. So personal websites uh, really need limited developmental resources. You can use content management systems such as uh, WordPress, or Weebly, or Wix because they're really the, the level of interactivity and uh, uh, information is pretty small, so they're fine. And um, these are, we, I have one and you should all have one. We'll, we'll develop one in this class to promote your employment credentials, share news and photos with family and friends, and share common interests and hobbies. Uh, organizational or topical websites, um, these are websites that are primarily concerned with information. So um, a professional or amateur group, such as an association, where there's a group of people um, that have a common interest and they want to share information just within their group. Um, other examples are uh, uh, topical websites. These are websites that focus on specific topics, specific subjects. Let's say for hunting, for instance, um, where you, hunting enthusiasts can go and, and just go to one place uh, to have information about hunting, where to hunt hunting techniques, almost like a magazine, if you will, hyperlinks to other resources, product reviews, things like that. Um, and then professional nonprofit, international and social volunteer websites are also considered organizational websites uh, where they're primarily uh, focused just on informing the public about a particular event or problem or service. And then of course commercial, which is really uh, the predominant type of website. And commercial websites, you, they're used to promote or sell a product or a service. And like I said, usually they're more sophisticated. All right, let's talk about uh, search tools. So when we're talking about search tools, we're typically talking about search engines. And it's really important to um, consider the keywords and the meta tags 
uh, and we'll talk about that in a moment when we're talking about search engine optimization. Um, so one of the things that search engines do, such as Google, is it develops an index based on a whole variety of different data, uh, including uh, inbound links, uh, keywords, meta tags. Um, spiders and robots collect these in algorithms um, to group uh, information together to better enhance our, our search engines. And then there's search directories. Uh, search directories are a little bit different. They're um, curated usually by humans. Um, where they'll go and and uh, and vet out uh, certain and websites and categorize them uh, yeah, based on their quality. Uh, SEO, so very important aspect of the internet, search engine optimization. So four really important aspects of SEO to increase your ranking in Google or other search engines is to have very clear meta tags. Meta tags are search terms or tags that are related to your website that you put in the head. And uh, that's the invisible part of your website, but search engines can find it. Keywords are also in the head. Uh, having really descriptive page titles is important. The biggest, the most important one is having relevant inbound links. So other people linking to your site, uh, including how much traffic you get also. And then clearly written uh, text. Other types of websites. So there is this whole slew of other types beyond the three that we've talked about. Travel, mapping, financial, uh, and career. All right, markup languages. Uh, it's important to distinguish between different markup languages. The one that we're going to use is HTML, hypertext markup language. It uses tags to define format or an organization of website elements. So here we have uh, the tags H1. And so whenever we have something that we're going to see and it's going to be organized in a visual way, uh, like this word hello, um, it will have a beginning and a closing tag. Tags are defined by their angle brackets, an opening and closing angle bracket, and all tags have to have an ending tag, which has a slash. That's how you know it's the ending tag. So these are invisible. These tell the browser how things are going to look and be organized, and then this is what we see. HTML5 is just the fifth generation of hypertext markup language. It has more tags, uh, more tags that help uh, browsers um, and, and viewers uh, deal with uh, streaming content, video, and audio and other interactive uh, content, such as games. The World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, sets the standards for uh, the World Wide Web, and they're just constantly trying to um, update and maintain uh, and advance and keep good standards uh, or standardization for the, uh, for the Internet. So now it's important to distinguish between HTML and XML. XML, or extensible markup language, this is a markup language that you can create your own tags for it. So it's a much more flexible markup language and it's primarily concerned with databases. And so when we're talking about the web, uh, we're talking about um, the, uh, the front end, which is HTML, and then the back end, which is XML, and how well they talk to each other. So you need a flexible uh, markup language to, um, to share and, and, and communicate with uh, HTML, which is static. It's just a set about a tags that you have to use, that one language that the browsers understand. Um, so let's take a look at some markup languages. So if you pull up a, a website, let's go to skis.com, or like, yeah, what's behind the scenes, the back end. So in Chrome, you can simply go to View, Developer, and Show Source. And here is all the source the internet is, or the World Wide Web is um, all open source, so you can go and take a look and see how their code is written. And this is a great way to find out ways to do things. So if you like a way a certain page is, is addressing a certain interactive element, you can go and see a little bit more how they did it. CSS is incredibly important. So what CSS does, or cascading style sheets, is it allows us to, uh, well, what it defines how the web pages are going to look. And the most important thing it does is it creates a consistent look. So if you go to a website and all the pages have the same typefaces, we have the same color schemes, very similar graphics and icons, um, and all of those things. And it creates a unified user experience. And this is done with cascading style sheets, because what it is is you have hundreds of web pages out here, then you just have one style sheet that tells all those websites how they're going to look. And it does that by, you, by the tags. So let's say, for instance, you have all over your website, you have H1 tags for your, for your, number, your level one header, and it's the one style sheet that says all H1 tags are going to be Helvetica, you know, 
side, EM and colored navy blue, something like that. And so that's defined by the one style sheet. Now the brilliant part about that is if you need to update or change the look of your whole website, let's say the font's looking a little outdated, you make one single change to the style sheet and then all 101 web pages are changed simultaneously. So this again creates consistency, it reduces error, and it's more efficient. It uh, takes a lot of time, or you know, because you can only imagine if you had 100 web pages and you had to hand key Helvetica onto every page, not only are you going to make some errors, um, but it would, it would be very time consuming. Uh, scripting languages we'll talk a little about. We won't spend too much time on, but these are languages that allow for a little more interactivity. So JavaScript is one that we'll talk about briefly. Uh, PHP, Hypertext Preprocessor. Um, this is a, a language that you, is spoken by WordPress and Squarespace and CopyScript, which is just another version or type of Java. They are active content because they there is this inter, like high level of interactivity with these scripting languages. Uh, they are susceptible to malware and hackers and text editors. So it's important to recognize that um, HTML5 is just text, so you can use any text editor, any word typing program to create web pages. You just have to save them as .html or .css, whatever you want. All it is is just text documents. That's all it is. There's nothing special. You don't need any special software to create web pages. Um, an HTML editor, though, is a little more advanced. Uh, it's like Coffee Cup, um, and that'll just sort of help you to um, organize your um, your your HTML a little bit better, sometimes using color coding and things like that. Now web development tools uh, are things like, uh, they have WYSIWYGs, uh, what you see is what you get. Um, so a little bit more dragging and dropping and clicking rather than just hand keying. Um, and, um, and you can see, as you can see here, this is a Dreamweaver, it's an old picture of Dreamweaver. Um, and uh, it's got some color coding that helps us to visually understand the code a little bit better. Uh, but also one of the things that uh, web development tools do is they help organize the tremendous amount of files, all the different web pages and folders and scripts, and keeping it all together. Uh, but again, it's important to know you don't have to have Dreamweaver to, um, to do web design. It just really helps. The other thing that web development tools do is they allow you to work in teams. Websites are and become very complicated, and typically you work in a team. And so this is a platform where we can all interact together. Other um, web development tools such as IDEs, these are web development tools that um, are a little higher level. Um, Microsoft Visual Studio Community is one where it's just a little higher level, they're a little more, they're expensive and you've got tech support. Uh, and then CMSs, which I've mentioned before, these are things like Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, and WordPress. Uh, so they are just a content management system that uh, starts with a template and then the user just simply um, puts in their photos and then their text and they don't have to know HTML at all. Um, WordPress is a, is, a, is a clear example of a content management system. Uh, then there's the intranet. It's important to know what that is. Our college has one that it's a special um, internet in that we can all communicate in. It's uh, it just just exists right here in, with for faculty and staff. Um, and now lastly, let's talk about web design roles. So what, if you want to get into web design and web development, what's your role going to be? So there's creative, technical, and then oversight roles. All right, so let's talk about creative roles, um, content writers and editors. These are usually communication specialists or marketers. Um, SEO expert, if it's a smaller organization, you might just hire in a consultant. Um, then there's the web designer. This is usually the front end developer. So graphic designers typically fill this role. Um, then the UI and UX managers are really growing uh, industry, really high, a pretty high paying growing industry. This is concerned with how um, users uh, interact, their experience with the website. So how seamless are they able to locate and find what they're looking for, making purchases and things like that. So that's the user experience designer's job. Um, web artist, graphic designer. So when you, it's as a subset, you know, a web designer is what we're going to do. We're going to design front-end websites, the look of them using HTML, but a web artist graphic designer, their role might just be to make mock-ups, create graphics and photography and icons, a lot of those visual elements, and they're not um, doing any of the coding. I've certainly done that in my career where I create a, a host of graphics and I simply send them to the web developer. 
multimedia producers. This is a whole specialty, um, people that specialize in video production or creating um, After Effects uh, or, or motion graphics using After Effects. Um, so graphic designers can fulfill this role. It's one of our areas of expertise, but it's in such high demand. Most commonly, people find that as a special career, just that alone. <clears throat> and then there is the back end. So we talked about the front end. Uh, the front end developer, remember, is what we're doing. We're, we're creating an interface using HTML. Um, back end developers um, uh, do the back end. So they're really not concerned with the front end, the visual aspect. They're considered more with the database and the back end functionality of the website. Usually we work in teams. The smallest team would be a front end and a back end developer. And occasionally there's a full stack. These are really unique people that are both highly creative and then highly technical at the same time. Uh, database developers, great high paying job. People are really good at math and organizing and uh, making sure that databases are secure. And then there's the web server administrator, just maintaining the network. And then there's oversight roles. So these are higher roles, higher paid positions. Uh, a web administrator uh, really kind of oversees the whole website for a really large organization. Um, and that's someone that has to understand everything from databases to graphic design or you know, web design to back end, that stuff. A system architect really is, again, similar, but this is a person that's creating really large, complex websites, and they're overseeing the creation of it. Testers are really important. Um, web development teams usually have their own set of testers. You can also hire testers or groups that specialize in testing because you have to constantly um, test your site on different um, um, tools and applications and different screen sizes and whatnot. And of course, now we have to have social media experts. So they're the people that um, specialize in how we're gonna communicate uh, through social media to, um, to our clients. All right, well, that's all for today. Uh, good luck on your quiz, and I'll see you next time.